I'm Dr. Craig Pullman here to talk about social cognition, which is the set of mental abilities that guide interactions with others. Put differently, it's thinking about relating. Social cognition has two important aspects. The first is interpreting social information, much of which is verbal, like picking up social lingo and nuance. It can be really hard for some kids to keep up with the rapid pace of social language. A lot of social communication is subtle, such as how we use voice inflection. For example, the sentence, I lost my hat, could mean several things depending on which word gets emphasized. I lost my hat. I lost my hat. I lost my hat. I lost my hat. Students with social cognition problems are often confused by these nuances of communication. They might be very literal in their interpretation and not appreciate other possible meanings of words, phrases, and sentences. Social information can be nonverbal, such as reading facial expressions and body language, as well as recognizing emotions in others. Social information can be complex. For example, smoothly entering into a group situation, like some kids playing a game, requires first interpreting both verbal and nonverbal signals of multiple people. These signals illuminate how open the group is to a new member or player, for example, or they indicate when would be a good moment to jump in. The second aspect of social cognition is taking action, or using the available information to make decisions about how to best navigate situations and relationships. This could be figuring out what to say, when to say it, and how to say it, as well as what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Social decisions cover a lot of territory and are important throughout the school day. They include figuring out how best to start and maintain a conversation, gauge what to say or do for the audience, like a teacher, enter into a group situation, like a game, resolve conflicts, make friends and develop relationships, and match emotions to those of another person or of a group, such as not being goofy if the mood is serious. Social decisions encompass verbalizations, body language, and actions. People with social cognition problems often have little self-awareness. They have trouble seeing themselves as others see them. Social cognition obviously has some overlap with language in terms of interpreting communication and expressing thoughts and needs. Some instructional approaches place hidden demands on social cognition. Examples include group work and team projects, cooperative structures like think, pair, share, and whole class discussions. Also, attention interfaces with social cognition. For example, relating with others often requires self-regulation to avoid impulsive decisions. Social cognition is a mental ability that is critical for school success, even though it does not have the same kinds of obvious connections as other neurodevelopmental constructs. And success in adulthood, professionally and personally, is intertwined with social cognition. I'll see you next time.